Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we've had a lot of different apps over the past couple of weeks be updated with some great new features. So I thought we'd talk about the major updates for Apple with iOS or iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And the first thing is Apple has updated its website for Earth Day. And to celebrate that, they're showing their overall progress as far as innovation at every step, as you can see here, about recycling, what they're actually doing with materials as far as disassembly and much more. So you can read all about that. I'll link it in the description if you're interested. Additionally, if you have a new device that you're trying to get and you want to trade in your old one, there's an all new trade in website. This is something that's great as it wasn't very good before. You'll see it says trade in upgrade save it's a win 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 and now we have more information about iphone apple watch ipad and mac and you can see more information as far as what you can expect with iphone 13 pro max up to 600 dollars find your trade-in value and it says grab your smartphone we'll make this quick and find out who it's made from first so you can select apple or even sony samsung or others and then go into details about your device and see what the actual trade-in will be like and then it will walk you through the process of trading in your device so this is much better than it was before now this past week zoom was updated with a pretty major update if you have an iphone 14 pro or 14 pro max it now utilizes the dynamic island and gains support for that there's also a new dark mode for calendar and you can hide incoming calls. It allows for zoom mesh caption enhancements and much more. So you can see quite a few different things as well as resolved issues also. So if you're using zoom on your phone or iPad or just in general, it should be a little bit better this time around. Snapchat announced they're having some updates very soon where the app will allow for new location sharing options. Those will be similar to what we have with the find my app where you can share your location with your friends or family. There's also going to be new my AI features expanding to all users instead of just plus subscribers. So within the app, you can use my AI. Additionally, there'll be new modes for flashback posts and much more. So this is coming soon. It's not available yet, but it will be available soon. Now, if you use WhatsApp, there should be some updates fairly soon as well. They continue to roll out some changes and this time around they're working on their very own version of animated emoji. This is very similar to what we have already with telegram, but it will be within WhatsApp. We'll have more and more features like this. And you'll see here, it says WhatsApp is working on animated emojis feature with Lottie to enhance user messaging experience. So hopefully that rolls out pretty soon, but they've at least announced it and you can see it on WA beta in, in Info, or at least it's found in the beta and you can try it out now if you're in that beta program. If you're familiar with Rovio, the makers of Angry Birds, they're being acquired by Sega for $770 million. This was announced on Business Wire. You can see here Sega Sammy to acquire Rovio Entertainment. So that's about to take place. What they're actually going to do with them in the future, I don't believe they've said, but hopefully they continue to make some fun games and maybe bring back some more classic styles as well. Now I wanted to talk about TikTok briefly as it's been banned in one state or is about to be. Montana just passed in their legislature a ban of the app, which would go into effect January 1st, 2024, if they don't change it. The governor does have to sign off on it. And if you violate the law, you can face up to a $10,000 fine. So that's something that maybe people like Apple, if they don't remove it off the app store for people in Montana or however they're going to regulate this, that could be a fine passed on to them. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with this, but this has been something that has been going around in the federal government as well, where it may be banned eventually. Let me know what you think about that though, in the comments below. Now, if you use Spotify and you had an outage the other day where it just wouldn't work, you're not alone. This was actually a big outage that people had. So if you were having issues with it, it is working now. But if you were having those issues, I just wanted to make you aware that there was an outage and it wasn't just you. So there was a problem with it, but it's working again now. Now, Instagram will now allow you to actually put multiple links in your bio. So if you're a creator on Instagram and you go into your your actual account settings under the link settings, you can add an external link. You'll see, I already have one. You can also add a Facebook link. So if you want to add external links, you can add multiple now where you couldn't do that before. Additionally, if you're creating reels, there's been some updates there. And within reels, there's new information as far as trending and more. So if you're creating different posts, you'll be able to see trending hashtags. And additionally, you'll see more analytics about the posts that you've made as far as watch time and more to help you figure out what you want to post. 
Netflix has been talking about stopping users from sharing their passwords for some time. So if you're using Netflix, Netflix has said it will implement a paid password sharing option in the United States within the next three months. Netflix will stop you from sharing your passwords by ensuring that when you have a trusted device logged in and then you want to use a secondary device, maybe an iPad or a Mac or something else, you'll need to be on the same network and log in or open the app every 30 days or so. That will help it maintain its location, which allows you to use your account remotely. Netflix can also use additional information such as your IP address and more to understand what devices should have access. Netflix has also said it will upgrade its basic with ads tier to 1080p. Currently it's at 720p, so that will help with better video quality. So expect those major changes within the next few months. Now, if you're editing video and you're using your iPad, you basically have two options. If you want more advanced features, you have LumaFusion and DaVinci Resolve. LumaFusion just received a major update and that update allows for multicam editing. So if we go to LumaFusion, this is a paid add on for $20 and allows you to sync multiple shots from different angles, then play them back and tap to cut between angles and create your masterpiece. There's new graphic UI changes for audio and new improvements and more. If we open up the app here, you'll see you can create your project just like before, but you'll have the option to update and allow for multicam if you want to do that. So this is something that I would like Apple to bring to the iPad with Final Cut Pro with a familiar interface, but this does pretty much everything that does as well. So if you're using LumaFusion full time for editing, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you use Adobe Lightroom, it just gains some great features with new AI powered upgrades. It includes Lightroom on mobile, web, standard Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. The new Sense AI powered upgrades have adaptive presets, masking updates, curves and denoise upgrades as well. So you can read about it here, but if you're in the premium tier, you can try all of those different things that are AI powered now. Now, if you use Outlook, Outlook has some really great updates that remind me of focus modes on iOS. If you use Outlook on Mac, the app has been updated with a new profile feature, which allows you to use multiple profiles for different email addresses. Microsoft says that you can create a profile for work and then one for home and have certain addresses not bother you depending on which one you're using. So I think that's a great option. Maybe you don't want to see those work emails late at night. You'll only see your home emails or things that are relevant. Craft is an app I've been using for quite some time. I've actually replaced the notes app with it because I like some of the formatting a little bit better and it helps me read my overall all notes easier while I'm recording a video. If we go into craft, it has some new features. You'll see here that this just looks a little different than what you might get with regular notes. I have things laid out for this one in particular, which is iOS 16.4 is out. What's new. When I did this video, this is sort of my outline of what I'm recording about new emoji cellular updates, music, and more. So I write these out and it's just an easy way to keep track of all the different notes for the different videos I record. The current updates now allow for more within the free tier. So you no longer have a limit on the amount of documents. They've also unlocked styling and card types. They've also updated collaboration, making it easier and you can see what's due on their website. So you'll see, it says the free tier got 100 times better. We've removed the one or 1000 block limit, unlocked every type of card, enabled search and more. So before this was a paid feature or paid tier. Now it's not. And so there's other improvements as well. So if you're not using craft, definitely check it out since more is free and you can use it. And they also have upheld their SOC two type two compliance for security. So I haven't really had any issues with it whatsoever. It works great on iOS, Mac and more. I pay for it. I pay for the premium upgrade. So it's something I definitely enjoy using. Now there's a new app I wanted to tell you about that would help you out if you use a continuous blood glucose monitor. So this is a new app called Glucomate. You'll see it's free to install. There may be some paid different changes within the app itself or paid updates, but you'll see it says your blood glucose readings at a glance averages over time, and it integrates directly into Apple's health kit to look at historical data and more to help you sort of determine what may be causing your different spikes or dips in overall glucose levels. So you'll see detailed daily history and help you determine whether maybe exercising helps with different things or changes the overall levels. So hopefully this will help you out as we wait for Apple to update the watch with sensors that can monitor this as well. So hopefully you find this helpful. And if you do, and you've tried it out, I'd love to hear what you think of it in the comments below. 
Now, just like every other week or so, Apple has updated their Safari technology preview to version 168. It has bug fixes and more and performance improvements and different notes about changes and fixes with things like Web Inspector, rendering, web animations, and much more. So they've updated this again. If you're coding for different websites and having issues, this may solve those issues in the future when it's released to everyone else as well. Now, iOS 16.5 will have the follow up this weekend, like I typically do every weekend. And also we're waiting for iOS 16.5 beta three next Tuesday or Wednesday, typically on Tuesday or Wednesday, they'll release that. And then we'll have an update. Now, by the time this video is out, it's very possible they could release the betas early, but I would expect currently to have maybe beta three on Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe a beta four or release candidate in May with a final release in mid May or so. So we don't know. Apple hasn't given a specific outline of when they expect it to launch, but we can expect that along with iOS 16.6. And of course, WWDC where we'll see iOS 17 and more. So be sure to check back in a day or so for the follow up this weekend with news and more. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.